yourself dealing with a machine that seemed like it had a mind of its own? There's some pretty weird stories about machines acting like they're alive. Like in 1989, this Russian supercomputer decides to electrocute Nikolai Gudov, a chess grandmaster, just as he's about to checkmate the machine for the third time in a row. Coincidence? Or is it possible the computer was feeling jealous? Is it possible that, just maybe, machines are really out to get us? On the other hand, if machines do have feelings, this could be good stuff to know. After all, if we're friendly with our machines, maybe they'll be friendly with us. Or maybe not. Fatal error. Call manufacturer. Okay, Mike, play back for rehearsal, please. She sells, she sells condoms by the seashore. She sells, she sells, she sells machines to wax the kitchen floor. She sells, she sells, she sells to get a slice of the big pie. She sells, but in the end, she sells her soul. Cause she knows that's what they want to buy. Mom, who's Pete? Mike, Mike, hold it. Working, not disturbing, remember? Mom, we figured it all out. See, we added up all the money we got for cleaning the bus and stuff. Yeah, my brother kicked in some bucks so he can drive when he's here. Drive? So now we have enough cashola between the three of us to buy a car. Guys, take a break. Go have a muffin or something. <laughs> you want to buy a car? Together. It'll have to be used. But Dad can check it out to make sure it's not a melon. Lemon. Or that. We can register it in Ned and Irene's name or yours. That way the insurance will be cheaper. Honey. You don't even have a driver's license. I'm scheduled to take the written tomorrow and the driving part the day after. Jack, you're going to be on the road with me, and, and Clue may be away at college. W why don't you just drive my car? Your mom car? So you're serious about me never having a date, falling in love and getting married, which means no grandchildren, remember? Clue, what do your mom and dad think about this? <laughs> they are completely, totally, 100% uninformed about it. Yet. Yeah. I'll think about it. We're getting the car! <laughs> Look at that. Look how nice that is. Dude, that's pink. What are you guys doing? Only getting ready to buy a new car. But it's 5 o'clock in the morning. We want to be the first ones to check out the ad so we can get the best deal. Wait, Mom actually fell for this? Jealous much? No. 
Will be, because I had to promise to give you rides sometimes. You know, like when your UFO breaks down, you need to meet the mothership? Hilarious. Dude, look! Sweet! It's not that great. It's right over there, but, uh... So, uh, Mr. Blanchard, the, uh, pistons on this puppy, uh, they're pretty good? Yeah. You sure your kids want this car? Yeah! I, I mean, uh, we won't, we won't be sure of anything until we check out the, uh... Drive shaft thing. I don't know about this. Aren't you kind of young to own a car? They're old enough, and they got the thousand bucks. You're not backing out of this deal, are you? No, it, not at all. It's just, well, I got to tell you, it's been acting kind of weird lately. What's wrong? It's, uh, it burns oil bad. For a thousand bucks, I could take care of the oil problem. Look, these guys got a deal or what? Sorry! Well? Yeah, all right, deal. I'll go get the pink slip. Here, trunk keys. Thanks. The guy was wigging out, man. That's not wigging out. Selling this car for a thousand bucks is wigging out. It totally rocks. Yeah, wait my brother gets here and sees what a deal we got. <laughs> Let's get this over with. She gave up chasing that hit single. Why should she work so hard? She can write one catchy jingle, buy a house with a big backyard. The suits fill up her fan club. The boardroom is her gig. Her music plays ten times a day. She must be really big. Hey, it is. Mike, I'm sorry. I just need a minute. Sounds fantastic, Molly. Come in and talk to me. Mike, um, why don't you take a break, okay? So how'd it go? It went great. Actually, it went better than great. I can't believe the guy sold it for a thousand bucks. Permission to be a concerned parent? Sure. I don't think I can do this yet. Now, I trust Jack, but I still think of Rick's accident every time I get into a car. He's going to be fine. Really, you don't have to worry. I'll make sure he's all right, Molly. I promise. Can I go? I'll be totally quiet. Okay, totally quiet. Please, just be careful. You go nice and slow. Nothing Jack can't handle. Okay? Okay. Look out. Jack, what are you doing? You said you were going to be quiet. I said you were going to steer once in a while. Quiet in the peanut gallery. The wheel twisted in my hands. I think the alignment's off. Good use of car terminology in your excuse, Jack. The alignment was perfect when I checked it. Although, it could be out a little bit now. Jack! I think I hit a patch of oil. You can make whatever excuses you want, Jack, but that's not going to fly with the driving tester. I'm sorry, Mr. Bell. I'm just nervous. Okay. Okay. Let's head back the other way. Now, slowly, do a U-turn. Good, Jack. That was nice and smooth. Yeah, way to go, dude. Check for oncoming traffic before you make a left turn? It wasn't me. The car just started going. I wasn't even gonna make a left turn. Then why did you turn on the signal? Yeah, man, you gotta be careful. This is our car you almost wreck and remember? Like I haven't heard that a million times yet. That's enough. How about you? You wanna chime in too? Nope. No chimes here. that bad. And if you don't pass, I'll just, 
I'll drive you around wherever until you do, you know? Unless you're like 40 or something. So how'd it go? Okay, what happened? He has an attention problem. It probably didn't help that we had three backseat drivers in the car. Well, we hit a couple of curbs and we had a near miss. Great. Mom, I don't know. But what if it isn't Jack's lame driving? What if there's something wrong with the car? I checked this car from stem to stern. It's in perfect condition. I'm not talking about a mechanical problem. Huh? Fiona, this is a real-world problem, okay? And it needs a real-world solution. Come on, let's go give somebody a pep talk. Phillips. I'm the sister of one of the guys you sold the car to the other day. Did something happen? No. I just wanted to ask you a couple questions about it. I'm busy. Wait. Did anything strange ever happen to you while you were in that car? We just got it running a couple of weeks ago. I rebuilt that car from the ground up. It was a wreck when I bought it. Look at this. I spent almost every weekend for two years working on that thing. Replaced just about everything except the engine. It's just a car. Rubber, plastic, steel. How could there be anything strange about that? I don't know. So I'm on the wait list for UC Santa Cruz, which is my dream, man. Awesome surfing. But um, University of Oregon, this one over in uh, Louisiana, are my backups. Spring break at Mardi Gras. <laughs> Um, silence. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I promise to take good care of the car while you're gone. Actually, um, since you're gonna be on the road and everything, I kind of thought that I'd take it with me to school. Jack, I just talked to the guy who sold you the car. I think he may know something about why it's hard for you to drive. You what? Fee, did it ever occur to you that my car is none of your business? Our <coughs> car, dude. Yes. You're right. Our car. Are we having a problem? Mom, tell Fee to keep her freaky brains out of my business. I was just trying to help you drive better. You are totally tense, dude. Okay, how about I keep the car at my house until you're able to just chill out and be more confident in your driving -ness. Okay, that's it. You butt out. You, I paid for part of that car, therefore I will drive it when I want. You... I believe it's time for me to mow the lawn. Fiona? I'm really sorry. I just wanted to help. Um, I, I better get going. Uh, I'll, I'll call you when the, when the showing is complete. Fiona, I know you're worried about your brother. Mom, if I asked you to do something for me, that would make you feel better about Jack and the car? Would you? Sure. Blanchard was in here all the time. He'd salvage parts off the other cars like the one he bought from me. Most of those parts you can't get new anymore. So you sold him the one he rebuilt? Oh, yeah. A classic, that one. Before the accident, I mean. It was in an accident? Oh, yeah. A real bad one. I knew the guy. Billy Arnest. Real shame. He was taking his wife to the hospital. She'd had a heart attack? She would have been okay, but they crashed on the way. She didn't make it. Anyway, the engine was fine. And Blanchard's a heck of a mechanic. You don't need to worry about it. He'd have done everything right. He loved that car. Then why'd he sell it? Beats me. Well, thanks for your time, Ed. Fiona, maybe we gotta get back. Okay. They were on their way to Hope Springs Hospital. 
when the brakes failed. Wow. That's majorly sad. But if the car's been totally rebuilt, what does the crash have to do with Jack's D-minus driving skills? I don't think Jack's driving is the problem. Okay. Remember when we were all in the car, Jack said he couldn't control the wheel, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do me a favor and find the intersection where Jack almost drove left in oncoming traffic. Okay. I was here. And here's the street where the car kept swerving. Did you notice it always swerved in the same direction? Okay. When we were headed towards downtown, we swerved to the right. And when we turned around and went the other way, we swerved to the left. You're right. It was always to the west. Always towards the hospital. Hope Springs Hospital. The same hospital this guy was trying to take his wife to the night of the crash. Okay, so what are you saying? That our car is trying to drive itself to the hospital? The accident wasn't the driver's fault. The brakes were faulty. I get it. So the car feels guilty for causing the accident. That's my theory. Wow. That is completely insane. Hey, there's a lot of weird stories out there about machines going nuts, acting like they have a mind of their own. There was this robot on that killed this Japanese guy in 1981. V. Okay, the point is that when Blanchett rebuilt the car, he didn't realize he was giving it a second chance. A v. chance to finish the trip to the hospital, you know, to make up for what happened in a way. V, it's a car. You're right. It's just metal, plastic, and rubber. Just say, the car does have a mind of its own. And my brother doesn't know that. The same thing could happen again. Clue, when's Jack's driving test? Uh, in like five minutes. He and my dad are on their way there right now. You got a car? Mm, my mommy yeah. borrowed hers. Phillips, Jack? Uh, yes, hi. You have two jobs today. One, follow my directions. Two, spill not one drop of my delicious, state-provided DMV coffee. Left linker? Huh? Oh. Wipers? Proceed into traffic. hitting that parked car. Heck, let's just chalk them both up to sorry and move on. But the wheel was... Pull over by that car. I want you to parallel park. All right, proceed to parallel park. Okay, he's gonna get some points off for that one. Let him blow quick! Get beside him, come on! Jack, I know what's wrong with the car! See, what are you doing? Get lost! You children, move along now. We're very busy failing a driver's test. It's not you, Jack, it's the car! I'm uh, just going to go be... Oh, wait. 
away from you. So, did you pass? Hope Springs Hospital. You okay? Dude, it's a high pressure job. I mean, I'm sure the driving tester guys have nervous breakdowns all the time, you know? <laughs> Very comforting. Mom, I don't think there's gonna be any more problems. You know, I mean, to drive, I mean. Well, I'm sure there won't, because nobody's going anywhere near this car until Ned takes a good look at every bolt, nut, and spark plug. Mom's still touchy? Yeah, but I don't think there's gonna be any more problems. Fee, that car's not alive. Hey, believe what you want. You know, but I think it's gonna let you drive it now, because it feels better. And, uh... When it does, stop the drive me around. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, when do you leave anyway? A couple months, I guess. Uh, only two more months for me to finally teach you how to do a layup the right way. I am the master, dude. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, when you leave, there's gonna be this big deal, and everybody's gonna be all weepy and everything, and trying to make sure they say goodbye and stuff. I guess so. Well, I was thinking, how about we just say goodbye now so we can uh, hang out for the next couple of months and not have to think about it all the time? Goodbye, Clue. I'll take good care of the car since I'm keeping it here. Goodbye, Jack. And I'll be sure and wash it every weekend since I'm taking it with me to school. <laughs> Enter the cyber world of the supernatural with Fee and her mom in Disney's original series, So Weird, right here on Disney.